Hey everyone, it's Mike from Junkie on Crafts and Builds, and this is an unboxing. Well, not really an unboxing, just more like the impressions portion of G.I. Joe Classified Series Bazooka. And man, is it nice to be back behind the camera. January has been such a crazy, crazy time for me, just with family and work and everything else. So it's been hectic to try to make time to sit down and make these videos. So for everyone who's been patiently waiting, and those that have become subscribers recently, I apologize for the delay, but we are here now. So let's move forward into 2023 by looking at this guy. So we'll start obviously real quick by looking at the box. And as you can see, I already unboxed him because I was using him for my Rakondo video. So the box is pretty much, we got the Tiger Force symbol here and in the background, we got this really cool image of Bazooka launching off a, a missile from his launcher on the side here. We have Bazooka blowing up more stuff. The iconic back. He is number 54. There is his stats if you want to look at him. So that's it for the box. Let's get to the accessories. And here we are with Bazooka's accessories. As you can see, we changed up a little bit from the plain uh, foam. I threw together this little uh, rock formation and gave uh, the figures a little base stand to, to stand on here. You know, something different to look at, something a little nicer, hopefully. But we'll start from left to right and look at his accessories, and we'll start with his helmet. Nice brown pliable plastic with this kind of uh, washed red on the paint, or on the helmet here. Got a little bit of uh, overspray going on and some, some uh, marks here where the brown stripe is painted over and whatnot, so... All in all, it's kind of like what we have with Rakondo. There's a little bit of QCing going on with the paint, but still pretty nice. Next, we have Bazooka's Bazooka, and uh, it's also very nicely sculpted, uh, hard plastic. We got this little uh, shoulder pad here that's painted uh, like a grayish color on both sides. And we got the handles and grips. We have an opening here to simulate Bazooka being able to put a rocket in, which we will simulate here. He comes with four of these little rockets. As we, uh, there we go. And as you can see, it slides right in the back there and you can f flip over the cover. It's just pushed in with this uh, pin for friction. And once we get it out, we'll lock it back up. So you can put a, a missile in the back and also in the front, it has enough space to securely hold a bazooka in place, like so. So that's really nice. I like the option of either having it where it's already been launched or being uh, loaded up. So that's his bazooka. Like I said, we got four of these missiles, nicely sculpted, no paint on them at all. A um, little bit of uh, sprue flashing. And they all fit inside Bazooka's backpack, which is right here. So as you can see, they all kind of fit in. They're kind of loose, so be careful with that. But uh, the sculpting on par with what we normally see with G.I. Joe Classified Series packs. It's got this uh, reinforced back to hold his rockets or missiles. Um, again, one of those things where we could put a little bit of a, of a dry brush on it to give it a little more depth and character. And as you can see, he's got these two little tabs down here, and they will hold his bazooka for storage. So you just kind of clip it in there and fold it down. I will say be careful with uh, the top handle and use, doing that a lot because there could be a chance that it gets bent or broken. But as you can see, it goes in place there. And we'll go ahead and just get bazooka all geared up. So... We'll just go ahead and put his backpack in. And yes, there is a huge conspiracy about how can he hold a backpack without any straps. It is G.I. Joe. He can just do it. So we'll put his helmet on. And he's holding off his equipment. And there we have Bazooka. Hopefully standing and all geared up. That's his accessories. Let's go ahead and talk more about the figure. And here we have Bazooka, so let's talk about him. 
Bazooka, aka David L. Katzenborgen, was born in Hibbing, Minnesota. As his vintage toy tech card talks about, when he was driving an Abrams tank for the 3rd Armored Division, he had a moment of uh, clarity, which entailed understanding that these vehicles that, they, that the Army had were so powerful and whatnot, they could still have vulnerabilities <clears throat> that could be exploited by even the simplest of persons armed with a rocket launcher. With that understanding, he transferred into the Army's Advanced Infantry Training Course and specialized in anti-armor weapons training. The quote on the bottom of the bio card reads, Subject is a decisive, fast thinker with all the instincts in, of a natural survivor. His first uh, issue was Marvel Comics number 44, which introduced him in a training scenario with heavy metal, airtight, and crankcase being uh, led by Lady J. <clears throat> now, when this uh, training evolution was interrupted by Cobra, it was a truckload of bats carrying a spore-like weapon that was created by Dr. Mindbender, whose first appearance was also issue number 44, as I said in my uh, impressions video for, for my... Uh, so in that episode, he was shown throwing items at the bats to try to disable them. Uh, again, very articulate, very fast thinking. So in the cartoon series, though, he was displayed in a very different manner. His personality, his intelligence seemed a little, little off. He spoke often in broken sentences and appeared to be somewhat dull-witted, mostly there for brawn instead of brains. He was calmly shown in episodes with Alpine as kind of like the comic relief between the two. Uh, he was in the first two seasons of the cartoon and even had his own one-off episode called Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent. <laughs> Fix the engine. Got something big. Yeah, I went out of the line, Pithead. Go on, this. Help me. Line broke. Your line probably wore out while you were struggling with me. His vintage Choi was part of the 1985 wave, and what was striking about him was his red New England Patriots vintage football jersey of their quarterback, Steve Grogan. He also came with the helmet, backpack, and infantry missile launcher, similar to what we see here. Version 2 was the Tiger Force version in 1988, which was a repaint of his 1985 figure, uh, except obviously the color change in regards to his jersey and the classic green and yellow tiger striped combat pants. His bio card for the Tiger Force version also had a secondary specialty of Tiger Shark Driver. So that's what I have for him in regards to his bio and stuff. So let's go ahead and let's get a closer look at this figure. And let's look at the figure. And again, Hasbro is just kind of knocking it out here with this sculpting. I, I have yet to have a classified figure that has not impressed me with, their, with its looks. And Bazooka is no different. So let's just remove his helmet here so you can get a good look at his face. Again, really nice sculpted detail on his face here. You know, all the little creases and whatnot that a, a normal person's face has. I mean, this is just really, really great detail. Um, as a bulkier figure, you know, his, his head is on a double, his head and neck and his double ball peg. He can look down a fair amount, up, eh, enough to be able to look straight on. Shoulders can go up to 90. And they have this soft plastic. Uh, here at the bicep swivel for the bottom of his jersey, uh, we have a butterfly. Arms go all the way around. We've got pinless double jointed elbows that give you a full bend. We have wrist swivel on his trigger finger here. And that is on both sides. We have a really cool upper chest so with that you kind of bend down bend back you can even get a little bit of like a and a curve here without it totally destroying the uh, the 14 on his jersey here his belt loose soft pliable plastic pants green with uh, the yellow gold tiger stripes Again, mine's got a little bit of a blemish along here. Tees can go all the way out. Drop down hips to get up and back. 
as a bigger figure, I'm not too concerned about him being able to do a lot of, uh, you know, stretching in the legs or whatnot, because he's just here for more for bulk. We've got a thigh swivel. Uh, we got pinned double knees or double jointed knees that give you a good, a good uh, knee bend. We have boot swivel. Mine's a little loose, as you can see here. Uh, again, that's something that some of the people have been noting with a lot of these recent figures. Unfortunately, um, just to get another QC item. We've got the brown boots. No other ex accent paints or anything on them, but they look real nice. We've got toe tilt up. We've got heel back. We've got a slight pivot rocker. So that's his articulation and his looks all together. So yeah, he's a, he's a pretty, pretty nice figure. I put him right up there with uh, the Tiger Force Outback. So yeah, all in all, really nice. So final impressions of G.I. Joe Classified Series number 54, Bazooka. Uh, here he is with the rest of the 2022 Tiger Force team. We have Outback, Rakondo, and Duke. And they really look good together. I, I wasn't going to go in on these guys initially because I never really had Tiger Force when I was <clears throat> when I was growing up. I didn't even have, I think, the, the, the vintage bazooka. But seeing these guys together and, and looking at the detail that Hasbro's put into this these sculpts, they look really good. I mean, yeah, Duke's a repaint. So yeah, hopefully we can get a newer newer one here soon. But overall. No real complaints. I can't wait for the actual vintage <laughs> version one of him. Uh, I think that'll be a fantastic figure. Uh, same with Outback. So the next question is, what are the uh, what are the next members of the Tiger Force team that's going to be out? I mean, we have an obvious redeco of Flint that could be pretty easy. Same with Roadblock. Um, but there are other characters that Dusty's another one that's going to be another easy repaint. I think. Yeah, if you can find him. Uh, get them. I have to thank T Man 978. Uh, I should have done it at the beginning of this video, but he's the one that helped me getting this uh, bazooka figure. So check out his channel. He is one of the founding members of the Figure Action Podcast. Uh, so I get to join them every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please join in on the chat. Uh, we have a good time just talking about toys and action figures and everything else. So yeah, that's about it for right now. I will see you guys soon. I'm working on getting more videos put together and, and out. Until then, you know, keep uh, hitting the like and subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I have the next video out. Have a good night and we'll talk to you soon.